In this lesson, we're going to review identifying types of equations. So in this short lesson, we're going to talk about the three types of equations that we're going to come across. In most cases, we're going to work with something known as conditional equations. So these equations are true under certain conditions, but false under others. So in the case of a linear equation of one variable, we have something like negative 3 times the quantity x plus 3 is equal to negative 13 minus x. So let's just solve this for x. We would simplify each side first. So negative 3 multiplied by x would be negative 3x. The negative 3 multiplied by 3 would be minus 9. This would be equal to, we have negative 13 minus x. Let's move all the variable terms to one side and all the numbers to the other. So I'm going to add x to each side of the equation, and I'm going to add 9 to each side of the equation. So what's going to happen is this is going to cancel, and this is going to cancel. Negative 3x plus x is negative 2x. This is equal to negative 13 plus 9 is negative 4. So negative 2x is equal to negative 4. I can solve that by just dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2, and I get that x is equal to 2. Okay, so that's my solution. So for this equation, it's conditional, right? It's true if x equals 2, but it's false under any other circumstance. So let me prove this. If I plug in a 2 here and here, right, I'm just plugging in for x, I will get a true statement. So let's erase this, and we would have negative 3 multiplied by the quantity. 2 plus 3 is 5, so times 5. This is equal to negative 13 minus 2. So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and this should be equal to negative 13 minus 2, which is negative 15. So negative 15 equals negative 15, so yes, this is true. So right now, this is a true statement, so we're good to go. But that's when x equals 2. So what if I tried a different value for x? We would see that we get a false statement, right? So let me erase this, and let's suppose I chose the value of negative 2 for x. So negative 3 times, you'd have negative 2 plus 3, which is going to give me 1. This equals negative 13 minus a negative 2 is plus 2. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 13 plus 2 is negative 11. This is false. Negative 3 does not equal negative 11. So you can see that our equation is true when we replace the variable x with the correct value of 2, but false under any other circumstance. So again, this is the definition of a conditional equation. So the next type of equation that you're going to come across is known as a contradiction. So these are equations that don't have a solution. And we're going to have a lot of these throughout the course. So something like 3 times the quantity 3x minus 1 is equal to 9x plus 5. So 3 times 3x is 9x. And then minus 3 times 1 is 3. And this equals 9x plus 5. So what I'm looking at here is the fact that 9x is over here on the left. And 9x is over here on the right. If you have the same value on each side of an equation, you can just get rid of it. Why do I say that? Well, look at what I can do. I can subtract 9x away from each side. And what's going to happen is it cancels here and it cancels here. So it's just gone. What I'm left with is nonsense. Negative 3 equals 5. That is false. So if you go through this process of solving an equation and you're left with nonsense, something like a false statement like negative 3 equals 5, you have a contradiction. So in this particular case, you would say that there's no solution. You could put no solution. Your book might show the symbol for the null or empty set. So when you think about sets, if your set contains no elements, right? If you had no solution, you wouldn't have any elements in the solution set. The way you notate that is with this symbol here. So this means no solution, if you see it in your book. Okay, no solution. You might also see empty set braces. This is probably less popular, but you might see that as well. What you don't want to do is combine the two. You don't want to use set braces with this symbol inside. That is incorrect. Okay, And for that, we'll talk about that when we get to set theory. All right, let's take a look at something else. So we also have an equation that's known as an identity. So negative 2 plus 2x is equal to negative 2 times the quantity 1 minus x. All right, so what do we do here? So we have negative 2 plus 2x is equal to negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and then negative 2 times negative x is plus 2x. So you'll notice that you have the exact same algebraic expression on each side of the equation. 
two ways you can think about this. The first way is, no matter what I plug in for X, it doesn't matter what value it is, I'm doing the same thing to it on each side, so I'm always gonna get the same result. It's always gonna be true for all real numbers, no matter what I do. The other way you could think about this is, I could go through the process of solving it, and I could say, okay, well, I could subtract 2X away from each side, so this is gonna be gone, right? That's gone. I could add two to each side. So now this is gonna be gone. So what am I left with? I'm left with zero is equal to zero, which is true. So if in the process of solving your equation, you end up with something that's just true always, well then you have an identity, okay? You have an identity. Okay, and an identity is true for all real numbers. So you can say all real numbers. Okay, that's gonna be your solution.